Hare Krishna everyone. Welcome to the day 7 of the Krishna book reading. Up till now we have read that uh, Devaki and her husband, they are both in captivity of uh, Kamsa and Kamsa has been cruelly killing the kids of Devki and Vasudev. The demigods have started to appear into the Raja where Krishna is supposed to appear as the fifth, sorry, the eighth child of both Devki and Vasudev. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Ajnana Vidam Pambarjanam By your appearance, the speculative knowledge of the ignorance will be vanquished and the real experienced knowledge of authorities like Brahma will be established. Men influenced by the three modes of material nature imagine their own God according to the modes of material nature. In this way, God is presented in various ways, but your appearance will establish that the real form of God is what the real form of God is. The highest blunder committed by the impersonalist is to think that when the incarnation of God comes, he accepts the form of matter in the mode of goodness. Actually, the form of Krishna or Narayan is transcendental to any material idea. Even the greatest impersonalists. Shankaracharya has admitted Narayanaha Paruvyaktat Vyaktat. The material creation is caused by the avyakta or the impersonal manifestation of matter or the non phenomenal total reservoir, reservoir of matter. But Krishna is transcendental to that material conception. That is expressed in Srimad Bhagavatam as Shuddha Sattva. I'll repeat. Even the greatest impersonalist Sankaracharya has admitted Narayanaha Paru Vyaktat. The material creation is caused by the avyakta or the impersonal manifestation of matter or the non phenomenal total reservoir of matter. But Krishna is transcendental to that material conception. That is expressed in Srimad Bhagavatam as Shuddha Sattva or transcendental goodness. He does not belong to the material mode of goodness and he is above the position of material goodness. He belongs to the transcendental eternal status of bliss and knowledge. Dear Lord, when you appear in your different incarnations, you take the different names and forms according to different situations. Lord Krishna is your name because you are all attractive. You are called Shyam Sundar because your transcendental beauty, Shyama means blackish, yet it is said that you are more beautiful than thousands of cupids. Kandar we sing in the Tarshanarti in the morning after the deity dressing from Brahma Samhita. Brahma Samhita is the glories of the Lord sung by Brahmaji himself. You appear in color which is compared to the blackish cloud because you are the transcendental absolute. Your beauty is mainly many many times more attractive than the delicate body of Cupid. Sometimes you are called Giridhari because you lifted the hill known as Govardhana. You are sometimes called Nanda Nandana or Vasudeva or Devaki Nandana because you appear as the son of Maharaj Nanda or Vasudeva or Devaki. Impersonalists think that your many names or forms are given according to a particular type of work and quality because they accept you from the position of a material observer. Our dear Lord, the way of understanding is not to study your absolute nature, form and activities by mental speculation. One must engage 
trusts himself in devotional service then one can understand your absolute nature and your transcendental form name and qualities actually only one person who can understand your transcendental nature or form and qualities only sorry only a person who has a little taste for the service of a lotus feast feet can understand your transcendental nature or form and qualities others may go on speculating for millions of years but it is not possible for them to understand even a single part of your actual position in other words the supreme personality of godhead krishna cannot be understood by the non devotees because there is a curtain of yoga maya which covers krishna's actual features as confirmed in the bhagavad gita naham prakashah sarvasya the lord says i am not exposed to any one and every one when krishna came he was actually present on the battlefield of kurukshetra and everyone saw him but not everyone could understand that he was a supreme personality of godhead still everyone who died in his presence attained complete liberation from material bondage and was transferred into the spiritual world o lord the impersonalists or the non devotees cannot understand that your name is identical with your form since the lord is absolute there is no difference between his name and his actual form in the material world there is a difference between form and name the mango fruit is different from the name of the mango one cannot taste the mango fruit simply by chanting mango 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 but the devotee in the form of the but but the, but the devotees who know there is no difference between the name and the form of the lord chants hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram 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 hari hari and realizes that he is always in krishna's company for persons who are not very advanced in absolute knowledge of the supreme lord krishna exhibits his transcendental pastimes such persons can simply think of the pastimes of the lord and get full benefit since there is no difference between the transcendental name and the form of the lord there is no difference between the transcendental pastimes and the form of the lord for those who are less intelligent like women laborers or the merc- mercantile classes the great sage vyasadeva wrote the mahabharat in the mahabharat krishna is present in his different activities the mahabharat is history and simply by studying hearing and memorizing the transcendental activities of krishna the less intelligent can also gradually rise to the standard of pure devotees the pure devotees who are always absorbed in the thought of the transcendental lotus feet of krishna and who are always engaged in the devotional service of in full krishna consciousness are never to be considered to be in the material world shila rupa goswami has explained that those who are always engaged in krishna consciousness that is the activities which are favorable to the lord are never to be considered to be in the material world he further goes on to say that those engaged engaged in krishna consciousness with body mind and activities are to be considered liberated within this body This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. Those who are engaged in the devotional service of the Lord have already transcended the transcend transcended the material position. Krishna appears in order to give a chance to both the devotees and the non-devotees for realization of the ultimate goal of life. The devotees get the direct chance to see him and worship him. Those who are not on that platform get the chance to become acquainted with his activities and thus become elevated to the same position krishna appears in order to give a chance to both the devotees and the non devotees for realization of the ultimate goal of life the devotees get the direct chance to see him and worship him those who are not on that platform get the chance to become acquainted with his activities and thus become elevated to 
the same position. Our dear Lord, O Supreme Controller, when you appeared on earth, all the demons like Kamsa and Jarasandh will be vanquished and all good fortune will be ushered into the world. When you walk on the globe, your lotus feet will impress the ground on the ground the marks of your soul, such as the flag, the trident and the thunderbolt. Thus you will grace both the earth and us on the heavenly planet who shall see those marks. O oh dear Lord, the demigods or the devatas, they continued, you are unborn. Therefore we do not find any reason for your appearance other than your pleasurable pastimes. All the, although the reasons for the appearance of the Lord is stated in Bhagavad Gita, he descends just to give protection to the devotees and vanquish the non-devotees. Actually, he descends for his pleasure meeting with the devotees, not really to vanquish the non-devotees. The non-devotees can be vanquished simply by one kick of material nature. The actions and reactions of the material nature, creation, maintenance and annihilation are being carried out automatically. But simply by taking shelter of your name and the devotees are sufficiently protected because your holy name and your personality are non-different. The protection of the devotees and the annihilation of the non-devotees are actually not the business of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When it descends, it is just for the, for his own transcendental pleasure. There cannot be any other reason for his appearance. Our dear Lord, you are appearing as the best of the Yadu dynasty and we are offering our respectful, humble obeisances unto your lotus feet before this appearance. You also appear as the fish incarnation as the horse incarnation and as the tortoise incarnation, as the half man, the half lion incarnation, as the boar incarnation, as the swan incarnation, and as King Ram Ramchandra, as Parshuram, and as many other incarnations. You protect you appear just to protect the devotees and we request you in your form present appearance as Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself to give us similar protection all over the three worlds and remove our obstacles for the peaceful execution of our lives. Dear Mother Devaki, within your womb is the Supreme Personality of Godhead appearing alongside with his, all His plenary extensions, He is the original Personality of Godhead appearing for our welfare, therefore you should not be afraid of your brother the king of Bhoja, your son, Lord Krishna, who is the original personality of Godhead, will appear for the protection of the pious Yadu dynasty. The Lord is appearing not alone, but accompanied by his immediate plenary portion, Baladeva, or Balramji, or Lakshman, as he was in the Puka. Devaki was very much afraid of her brother Kamsa because he had already killed so many of her children. So she was very anxious about Krishna. In the Vishnu Purana it is stated that in order to pacify Devaki, all the demigods along with their wives used to visit her to encourage her not to be afraid that her son would be killed by Kamsa. Kamsa was within her womb, sorry Krishna who was within her womb was to appear not only to diminish the burden of the world but specifically to protect the interests of the Yadu dynasty and certainly to protect Devaki and Vasudeva. It is understood that Krishna had been transferred from the mind of Vasudeva to the mind of Devaki and from there to her womb. Thus all the demigods worshipped Devaki, the mother of Krishna. After thus worshipping the transcendental form of the Lord, all the demigods with Lord Balram, sorry, with Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva placed in front departed for their heavenly abodes. The sense the Bhaktivedanta purport of the second chapter of Krishna, prayers by the demigods for the Lord Krishna in the womb. As we mentioned earlier, the different incarnations, the ten incarnations of Krishna. We are in Kali Yuga. Towards the end of this Kali Yuga, Lord will appear as Kalki of Dar, somewhere in South India. It is already written in the Puranas. And today, is the appearance of the half man and half lion avatar of Bhagwan, which is Lord Nrsimha Dev, 
who appear to protect his five-year-old devotee, Pralad Maharaj, son of Hiranyakashipu and Queen Kayadu, because he refused to say that his father Hiranyakashipu was the supreme god. So when challenged by uh, Prahlad Maharaj, he asked him, can your God appear from the pillar? And it happened so. God appeared as half lion and half man and protected his little Bhakta, Bhakta Prahlad from his uh, father Hiranyakashipu and rest we know he annihilated Hiranyakashipu by putting him on his lap because he had deviously asked for the boon for not being killed either in the day or in the night by any of the species in the mankind so God defeated him at his own boon and appeared as half lion and half man and killed him on his lap and Prahlad Maharaj was not scared even then he didn't want to ask for any other Vardhan or the boon from Bhagwan who had appeared in the courts of Iranakashipu but instead to pacify the Lord who was enraging at, at that moment after killing Hiranyakashipu, Prahlad Maharaj, the innocent five-year-old Bhakta, he walked and garlanded Bhagwan, Bhagwan Narsimha himself. We pray to Lord Narsimha for the protection of our Bhakti and the protection of all our love friends and all our activities. So I will take this opportunity to wish all all of those who are fasting today for Narsimha Dev till twilight a very happy Narsimha Jayanti. Please watch the Yagna on the various on the various channels on Mayapur.tv or Vrindavan.tv and have the darshans from around the world. Have a blissful day everyone. Hare Krishna.